Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this lesson, Lesson 52, we're going to take a look at some of the modern approaches to enterprise architecture. In Lesson 50, we took a look at the traditional model-driven approach, where we really model the enterprise, find out what we want to do, create roadmaps, and then communicate our progress constantly updating that model. But then in Lesson 51, we took a look at the other traditional approach, the initiative-driven approach, which really, we don't do modeling unless we have a particular initiative. And that modeling was really scoped to the particular initiative and the areas of the enterprise that were impacted. Both of these traditional approaches fail in today's world. Let me show you why. These two traditional approaches, which are still currently used, is one of the reasons why enterprise architecture is so hard. You see, we have a current state of what the enterprise looks like. And then what we want to do is get to some sort of future state based on a particular business initiative. And of course, as we saw in Lesson 49, we develop some sort of roadmap or migration plan of how to get there. There's a few problems, and they all go towards this future state. You see, this seems very solid, logical way of being able to run initiatives in the business. However, these initiatives usually take too long to implement. And as a matter of fact, they don't address the volatility in an ever-changing landscape. As a matter of fact, knowing how to get to that future state is not always clear and very rarely are enough details provided to know even how to implement it. And this causes a lot of communication churn. Really, it's the second point there, that volatility in an ever-changing landscape, which really is the death nail to these traditional approaches. Actually, let's analyze this. I'm describing a game that usually takes too long. It's an ever-changing landscape with lots of volatility. Knowing how to win is not always clear. And we know the rules, but there really aren't enough details to actually play the game. And you know what I've just described? The classic game of chess. It does take too long. It's an ever-changing landscape. Knowing how to capture that king to get in checkmate is not always clear. And although we know the rules of how each piece moves, it's not clear how to get there. So we're going to revisit this chess analogy. But first, let's take a look at three modern approaches to enterprise architecture. And these kind of do address the issues with the traditional approaches. The three modern approaches that seem to have a lot of promise, by the way, actually in companies, is the incremental approach, the value-driven approach, and the adaptive approach. And let's take a look first at the incremental approach to enterprise architecture. The incremental approach really places a focus on small transformations that will continue to improve your current state. In other words, the state of what the business is in that eventually lead towards a final goal. And let me show you what happens here with typical companies. And so here's our current state. Well, we've got a vision of where we'd like to be. Let's say the number one premier online insurance company in the nation. Now, that's a vision. That's a goal. But really, what we've seen that doesn't work well is driving straight towards that goal because we have an ever-changing landscape. The details are not enough to implement, and it usually takes too long. So the incremental approach to enterprise architecture, we do have a vision of where we'd like to be. But instead of like a death march towards that goal, what we do is we make continual improvements every step of the way, slowly reaching towards that goal. But then something happens. Boom, the CEO gets indicted. Whoops. Now we still have a future vision, but that changes things. And so now we start incrementing our architectures, incremental changes that continue to improve our situation. Did you notice that was almost a retrograde? We're now not leading towards that goal. Now we are. And all of a sudden, now we can, whoops, uh-oh, there's a current merger or acquisition. Now, we would still like to be the number one premier online insurance company, but we're going to have to actually now take action based on that change in business 
to continually increase our advantage or continually improve our current situation. Market crash. Oh dear. Well, we're going to have to adjust things a little bit in our increment, but finally we end up reaching our objective. And that's what the incremental enterprise architecture approach is all about. I'm going to show you all three of these approaches kind of in wrapping up an example of how they're actually used. And so we'll just hold off right now on that example because I want to show you how they really all combine with all three of these. Because the next is a value-driven approach. Now, this is usually used in conjunction with an incremental approach. But the value-driven approach to EA really says that all enterprise architecture efforts, big or small, are always scoped under the context of a very specific business value or business objective or business justification. And that could be things like cost savings. That's why we're doing it. It could be something like better time to market, increased user satisfaction. The, just the desire to have more customers or even strategic positioning of our company. And so within the scope of this, the reason I really like the value-driven approach is because on all levels, every time we do something, every time we spend money on a transformation, there is always business value or it's always tied to a business objective. And that's a really cool way of not only understanding the context, but also really streamlining the process of doing things. We are not going to move to microservices, everybody, if it's not tied to a specific objective or business need or business goal or business value. And that's really what that value-driven approach really provides. The third approach is called an adaptive approach to enterprise architecture. And here, the adaptive approach is quite extreme, but very interesting. It essentially ignores the future state. In other words, there is no future state in the adaptive approach. But instead, we focus on creating highly adaptive systems that can start to evolve as the business evolves. If we want a certain objective or initiative, the architecture changes and evolves to be able to accommodate that without any tied target towards a future state. And as a matter of fact, um, a lot of this is done through two things. The first are reactive architecture patterns. Um, patterns of reactive architecture uh, through automation and also machine learning uh, that allow our systems to be self-aware, self-healing, self-configuring, uh, self-adapting, self-protecting, self-learning so that the software itself, the overall architecture, can change as our business situation changes. As a matter of fact, uh, Neil Forge, Rebecca Parsons, and Patrick Kay have all uh, kind of evangelized this through their great book, Building Evolutionary Architectures. So let's close this short video here by actually tying all these together and put all these approaches together and see how they work. I'm going to show you a great example of how to do adaptive and also value-driven architecture. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to come back to that game of chess. You see, in chess, our objective is to get the opponent in checkmate, effectively capturing the king. In other words, that's the only move we have. Now, most of us who have played chess know pawns can move forward. Of course, the king can only move forward, backward, sideways, one space, and so on and so forth about the rules. How are we going to capture the king? That's our business initiative. We're going to capture that piece right there. Uh, what's your plan? What's your approach? Because that's the future state. And as a matter of fact, this really does illustrate how difficult enterprise architecture is when we have a current state, which is right now, and a future state, and we don't know how to get there. The traditional approaches of enterprise architecture just won't work. And so, what is our opening move? I'm going to move right there. Hmm, why? Incremental approach. The incremental approach of enterprise architecture says that I'm making small incremental improvements to always improve my current state. I've improved my current state by the fact that now my rook has an opening to get out. Now think about this, the value-driven approach. Every move I make in chess has to be tied to some sort of value. There has to be a justification of why. 
And so my opponent responds and then I move over here. Now, value-driven approach. I now have my queen and bishop to get out. So incremental approach plus that value-driven approach. Now, all of a sudden, we start playing the game of chess. And as we continue to play, you notice one thing that's happening. The landscape is continually changing. What's our plan now? If we look at the moves we just did, the landscape is always changing. Everybody, this is the same thing in business. It's always changing. Any plan that we had, any plan that we had is now probably invalidated. So now my opponent makes a move and the situation has changed. I am now in check, everybody, and I'm about to lose the game. That could be a merger, could be an acquisition, it could be our CEO getting indicted. It could be a market crash. It could be anything that's happening, a change in the uh, government regulations or, or regulatory compliance rules. And so now, although my objective is to capture that king, watch this. I have to abandon that plan and actually address the current situation. That is the incremental approach. And so I'm going to now block that merger or acquisition or that hostile takeover and now threaten my opponent because that bishop is just about to be captured. My opponent reacts. Now I'm safe. And now I can continue on with my moves. And do you notice now the situation has significantly changed? Look at our landscape. And let me ask you this. If you were to hit pause and study the board, what's your next move? What is your plan to capture the king? You see, the game of chess is a perfect example of A, why enterprise architecture doesn't work, but also number B, or part two, is leveraging value-driven approaches with incremental approaches, being highly adaptable and allowing my systems to evolve is the way to actually approach this problem in business. For more information, you can certainly go to Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are housed. And also, you can see where I'm going to be speaking at uh, public training, online training, and also conferences at my upcoming events page on my website. And so this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 52, The Modern Approaches to Enterprise Architecture, really bridging the past three lessons to see the traditional approaches, how they work, both the model-driven and the initiative or I'm sorry, the model-driven and the initiative-driven approaches, and also now why they don't work, and some modern approaches to enterprise architecture. So thanks for listening, and stay tuned next Monday for another lesson in software architecture.